Hello everyone, Keith from Unmade Sugar Photography here and today I'm going to teach you how to do a levitation image and get this photo here to look like this photo here. So sit back, relax and I hope you enjoy. Okay, so first of all you need to position your model on something that you're willing to remove. In this photo you can see I've got her to lie down on a rock, which is what I'll be moving from the image. If you can maybe have a chair available, you can make her lie down on a chair. Well, that would work just as well. So first of all, you need to go up to Select, Subject, and let Photoshop do its own thing, see how it goes. It normally does an OK job, we'll see how it gets on. OK, that's done not a bad job, it's missed her hair and the bottom of her shoe. So let's just zoom in and make the selection a bit better. Just by simply selecting the Selector tool just dragging to make it better an alter option on the keyboard to remove anything from the selection so we'll just zoom in now and just get it all checked out I'll fast forward the video through this section just so you don't have to sit and watch me do this and I'll be back when I get to the next stage Okay, so I'm happy with the selection now. So from here, you go up to select and go to select a mask, and that'll bring you into this tab. Okay, so from in here, we get a black and white view, which is what I have to work on. Click on the second icon in the corner, which is the refine edge tool, and then slowly paint round. All your edges you want to change, like I'm changing the dress at the moment, I keep flicking back and forth by simply pressing X on the keyboard and I'm literally just refining the, the frills of the dress at the moment and the ribbon at the back. So I'm gonna refine this mask and when I'm done, I will be back. Okay, so I'm happy with the mask now. So just check it a few times. Um, the hair's not perfect, but I'll explain why later. So when you're done, click on the okay button to bring you back in with your mask selected. Right, so now you've got your refined mask and you're back at your main screen. What you need to do now is to create a few layers. I have an action that I do this called Free Layers from Lock. All it basically does, it creates a layer with a mask on, with the model on, a layer underneath, which is untouched, and then another layer on top, like so. So after that, I have another action called Select and Fill, which is basically a contents aware mask, which is gonna remove the model from the bottom picture as best as Photoshop can leave me with just the background. This can take a while depending on your processor, so just for the face of this video, I'm gonna speed this bit along. Okay guys, so as you can see, Photoshop has had a, an okay go, I don't wanna say it's okay, it's not brilliant. We're moving the model from the background, so but it now means I have an empty background layer without a model on, which we will need later. So the next thing to do now is to tidy up the layer mask just to make sure that the layer mask is really good on the model so what I like to do to do this is to put a color a really strong color behind the model on a new layer so you can see exactly what it's like and then work from there okay now so we've got the red layer behind and we take a close-up we can see a few areas it's missed as you can see here it hasn't done the bow on her hair pretty much at all so that's the first thing we'll tackle so uh, what I do is I get a white brush on the layer mask nice and hard on the brush and just paint it back in so you've got it all in going don't worry about it so much about going over the lines at the moment just get the whole thing painted in then once you've got it painted in you then switch over to a black brush to hide it and just very neatly go around it just to get it back as you can see what I'm doing here so that's pretty much what I've got to do around the entire image of just areas it's missed so again I'll speed the video up and come back when I finished Okay, so I'm happy with the mask around the model now, so that's all done. So next stage is removal of the stone to actually make her float. So that's part two, so we'll get on with that right now. Okay, so now it's time to remove the stone from the image that she is sitting on. So there's obviously a few ways to do it, she can clone stamp it, 
but I like to draw a pen tool around it first just to get a selection just of the stone so I'll remove the model from the image I will select the pen tool and I will do a slight drawing around I will come back when that is finished okay so I'm round now so now you're gonna to go to make a new selection do not feather it and you get a nice selection then go to edit fill and we're going to content to wear fill and let's see what Photoshop can do see if it can actually do any good of a job save us for doing a lot of work with cloning out let's press OK let it have a think about it and that's what it's done it's not brilliant but it's a starting point so from here we'll be able to make a start okay so we'll drop the model back in now and by dropping the model and you can see areas now that you don't need to worry about they'll be covered by the model so it's a good idea to do that so basically now we're just going to make this look like she was just down there was no rock so the first place I'm going to start is in the wall in the bottom left hand corner so we're going to grab the clone stamp tool and just keep selecting using alt or option and rebuild the wall by cloning the parts of the wall we had so once I've got that done I will be back Okay, so the wall is done now, it's not brilliant, we'll tidy everything up at the end. So now it's just tidying up the rest of the image, just around the model and the other wall. Uh, this is going to take me a while, just clicking back off, so I will speed this part of the video up, just to save you having to watch the whole thing, and I will be back when it's all done. Okay, so after working on it for a while, I'm not too happy with the way the grass and the wall looked. But luckily, before we started the shoot, to get the light right, I took a blank with no model in front of it, just to the right of the stones, which I will open up now. Here it is. And I'm pretty sure I can use the grass and the wall off this to be able to fix the problems. So I'm going to open that up in Photoshop, and then get on with cutting sections out of that to put into the other images that I've started. Right, so I'm going to start with the grass, I'm just going to make a selection of the grass, just a square selection. Grab that selection by copying it onto its own layer and then drag it across onto my document and put it on the grass layer there. Obviously I've got to change the perspective a little bit, move it around, do a bit of masking. But I'm going to do this with this piece of grass and the wall until I get all the elements right as I want them. So to save you watching this all the way through, I'm going to speed it up and I'll be back to you when it's finished. Okay, so I'm now really happy with the wall and the grass, how it's come out now using the other image. So always take a second image because it's literally saved this image. So next up now, we just got to do a little bit of liquefying on the back of the model, just where she was lying on the stone, just it's a bit flat. Obviously the dress is just flattened onto there. So to do this, the best and easiest way to do this is to open up the liquefy tool. So if you go over and open the liquefy tool, give it a second to load. Okay, so once the liquify tool opens, you'll be greeted with this. I don't muck about any of the settings here for this. And you are literally now just going to get the brush tool and just push in under the dress. You can see what I'm doing here. Just to create more of a natural arch where as if she was levitating. Push out the dress a little bit. So take as much time as you want on this. For the spray of this video, I'm going to speed this up a little bit and just do it a bit quickly. But obviously you take your time. Do what you want with it. Now the hair, I'm not too happy with at all. So when I do the speed date, you'll see that I actually put in some fake hair. Um, it's my mistake. I didn't look where it dropped on the rock. And it's a lot of effort to complete and change. So it's just so much easier 
just to change the hair so when the speed up happens in a minute you will see that I do a hair replacement but this is pretty much it with the liquify once you're happy with your arch you can go ahead and press ok let it save the changes for that and then it will bring it back in okay now so the final job before you start your actual edit and make it look how you want is to create a shadow underneath her which obviously wasn't there because there was a rock there so it's really easy to do drop a blank layer behind her get a black brush lower the opacity on that brush a little bit because you don't want it too high around 30 percent is good simply paint in underneath her like i'm doing here don't worry so much about it being super neat at the moment just get a shape a bit darker on the areas that are closer to the ground just to make it look more natural and then when you're happy with your shape simply go up to filter blur Gaussian blur and then blur it out enough so it's still there but it's not crazy just like I've done here and, that's, and then lower the opacity to get it right and then once you're happy with it you'll have the shadow underneath it Okay, so one final thing that I like to do, I just like to blur the background out a bit more. So the best way to do this is make a duplicate of your background layer. Go up to Gaussian Blur and blur it out to about 13, 14 pixels. It'll blur out the whole image, but don't worry too much about it. Get it down to where you like it. You're looking just at the background, not the foreground. Once you're happy where you are, press OK. And simply add a layer mask to that image. Grab the gradient tool, make sure you've got black as the foreground, white as the background. As we drag up from the bottom, and as you'll see, it creates a lovely gradient, which gives you a nicely blurred out background, but keeps the foreground solid. As you can see what I'm doing here. So keep dragging it till you get something you're happy with. Take your time, and then get it right. And then, once you're happy with it, just have a quick inspect around everything, check everything's okay and good. Merge those two layers back together. And that's pretty much the basics of a levitation shoot. Now, it's up to you what you do with it. So the next part of the video is going to be what I did with it. So it's going to be a speed edit of what I did. So just sit back, relax, and hope you enjoyed the speed edit. Hope you enjoyed this video. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.